Good day everyone, Money Tree here and on today's video I'm going to review the HWQ950T Samsung uh, soundbar. Now I'm a bit of a hi-fi guy, not a lot of people probably know that about me so I do have stereo equipment and I'm not new to it but what I am new to is the soundbars and I really wanted to try to get a good soundbar uh, for the main level upstairs and I did a ton of research. Uh, I picked up the Samsung bar and I want to do a review on it so rather than keep blabbing let's just get right to it. So if you buy the unit, you actually get a square box. Uh, a lot of these come in what looks like a hockey stick shaped box because of the way the sub is packed, but here it's actually square, I guess because of the rear surrounds. Let's take a closer look at the bar. So we got 15 speakers total, so that's 246 watts, nine channels. And then in the subwoofer, we have 160 watts. And in the rears, we have four times 35 watts. Now four speakers total are upward firing. Now. Here in the new bar, we have these extra two channels to give us the 9.1.4 uh, opposed to last year's 7.1.4. So I'll throw up a picture of the Q90R from last year, and you can see it only has one speaker on the side, whereas the new 950T has two speakers on the side. So that's the big difference. So you're getting an extra two speakers with the Q950T, but is it worth it? I guess we'll see. Uh, one thing I can say is it's actually packed really, really well, so it can uh, endure some maybe uh, bouncing around during shipping. Here's the bar coming out of the top of the box. You can see there is styrofoam on both sides. We have the sub in the middle. I'll just pull it out here. If we look in the box, there's one more here, and what this is is both surround sound speakers are in the box. I got fooled here. I thought there was something on the sides, but there was actually nothing on the sides. So let's just open up the surround sound box and see how it looks inside and how they are packed. So the packaging is really good. Both surround sound speakers are individually wrapped, which is really nice. That means they have no scratches or anything like that. No bumps and bruises, no chips, nothing like that. Mine came in perfect condition. So I was really, really happy with that. Now let's go to the sub. You have to be a little bit careful when you're opening the sub just because it is kind of heavy. So you can see here, I was just, I wanted to do it for the camera, but at the same time, I wanted to be careful not to drop it because it does weigh a little bit. So you just got to be careful with the sub. Now, don't forget inside here, there's a little box. And once you open the box, there'll be a bunch of little treasures for you to find. So there'll be a manual, there's the remote control, there's some cables, and it even comes with an HDMI cord. So that's pretty awesome. Really, really happy about that. I'll show you, here is the, uh, I guess, mounts for the wall if you wanna mount uh, the soundbar to the wall. We have uh, just some hardware, stuff like that. I wanna show you the remote. It's actually really simple, really easy to use. So I was really happy with the remote. It wasn't an over complex uh, remote. And then they even gave you some rubber feet. So that's good, that's how the box comes and that's basically what it looks like. Here's this template if you decide to mount the soundbar to the wall. So that was a nice touch that they did. Now, here we go, we can check out the speakers. The rear speakers are actually not that big. So you can put them anywhere. I thought they were gonna be a little bit bigger, but when I took them out of the box, they actually weren't that big. The sub is a really nice size because it's kind of thin, which is good, and then it's, uh, it's long. So you can put it anywhere and it fits into a lot of spaces. I actually put it right behind my TV and it sounds great and it fits there. There's uh, just the AC plug and then there should be a reset button. Maybe I'll show you if I can zoom back in here. There you go, there's the reset button if they don't work. Now, I don't even know if I'm gonna pronounce this. Uh, I'll put it up there, Quadrat, I guess that's the fabric. Uh, it looks a lot like uh, 70s stuff, but it's pretty high end. Don't forget the rear speakers are left and right. You can't interchange uh, the rear surround sound speakers, so they are not interchangeable. So just so you know, make sure the right one goes on the right and the left goes on the left. Now here's the sound bar. Let's zoom in here, take a little bit closer of a look here. You can see we're at uh, 48 and a half inches. Our height is about, well, just under three inches and our depth is about five and a half inches. So definitely a uh, good looking sound bar. I like the way it looks personally. Uh, here in the back, you can see that's where the cables are gonna come through on the back. So it's sort of got that cut out there. I'll flip up the sound bar in a minute, but before I do that, here's the side. I was a little bit worried how the side would look here but it looks good and I'm quite happy with it. Now here's this fabric again. And you know what, I was really torn between uh, last year's model and this and if I'm gonna like it or not. And you know what, it's grown on me. It's it's kind of a cool looking fabric and, and I like it. Here's a bottom view of the bar. You can see there's where the AC outlet's gonna go. If I pan over here, you can see there's just a reset if you have to for uh, the speakers, uh, the network and a USB for service port. And when we pan over here, 
you'll see there's the eARC connection to go to your TV and we have HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and your digital optical in. The only thing is it's a little bit tight under there, but they do work. Now here's where it's gonna go. Please don't laugh at me. I know it's an older TV, but I just, I really like this TV and it works good in the corner. I'm gonna put the sound bar on the top or I'm gonna try as best I can now. As you can see, there's not much uh, room there. So I have this foam and I'm just gonna put this foam just like so and it should hold no problem because the rubber pads on the bottom of the soundbar will grip the front part of the TV, so it shouldn't be going anywhere. And here you can see how it looks mounted on the top of the TV. I think it actually looks really good. There's that little bit of foam just supporting it in the back, that's all. With the rubber pads, it's it's um, it's really, really firm. It actually doesn't look like it's gonna move anywhere. Here's the front. Once again, I'll let you decide how well you uh, think it looks. Styling uh, with this fabric is really a, a personal thing. To me, it's reminiscent of maybe some of the older hi-fi audio speakers. That's to me what it, uh, what it reminds me about. But I think it looks really good, but it's a personal choice. Definitely a personal choice, but I see it getting a lot more popular on a lot of other sound bars So it's definitely catching on now if we turn it on we can see here's our buttons on the top We do not have a display on the front The only thing that is on the front is a little red dot and you can turn that on or off uh, with the mic there You can see I turned it off and there you can see I turned it back on. So that's the only thing that you will see on the front of this soundbar. Now here's how it looks uh, with the TV. You can see uh, the mic is off, so that's the red dot on the soundbar there. We're gonna zoom in a little bit closer here and you can see I can just scroll through everything on the soundbar. So it's pretty easy to scroll through everything, which is, which is kinda nice, but a lot of people are saying, wait a minute. Do you have to go to the soundbar to do all your adjustments? And yes, that's a very uh, valid thing. It's easy to use, but at the same time, uh, you don't want to go to the soundbar to do all your adjustments. You can see I have it hooked up just with my uh, my cable box and my uh, Apple TV. So I don't want to come up to the soundbar every time just to make adjustments. So the good thing is it does have um, a decent app. I guess I wish you could control more with the app. It actually even goes to uh, all the way to 100, but uh, I found it's very loud even on 40. Here's the app here. So you can control these things with the app. You can control your inputs, your sound mode, uh, your volume. So you do have some control. I know some people are saying they wish they had uh, more control. Here's another screenshot of the app. But I mean, this is what it is and at least you don't have to get up. And you know, there's multiple thoughts about it. The nice thing is you don't have uh, these words looking at you when you're watching a movie. It's just dark the way it should be. So mixed thoughts on that. Now for overall sound quality, I'm really, really impressed with this. I never thought a sound bar would sound that good. I got an Anthem in the basement and it's uh, I'm used to that and this thing actually just blows me away. The other thing is some people had problems uh, pairing their speakers and they, you know, crackly speakers and they're dropping out. And you know what, I didn't. All right, so I'm gonna show you how fast they can pair. Here's the remote, so I'm gonna turn it on. And I've just turned it on and you should see them uh, pair in a second. There you go, they're paired. So that fast, now I'll turn it off. And they're off. So I haven't had any issues with the speakers pairing. So how did it perform? It performed flawlessly. I was actually very, very impressed with the Samsung soundbar. This Q950T was just awesome. Now, if I can make note of a few things, the rear speakers, very engaging and uh, quite loud. You could hear them all the time. So it, however, Samsung programmed this to, uh, to decode everything. They did a fabulous job because it just sounds really, really good. The other thing is some, ple some people had said the subwoofer wasn't loud enough. I don't know if maybe they just didn't position it in the right part of the room or maybe they don't have it in a corner, but for me, it got uh, to very low frequencies and when you turned it up, it's, it sounded great. Now, the sound bar itself, the sound stage is very wide. It sounds, it sounds really, really good. I think anyway, the voices are very, very clear. The upward firing speakers is unique because I haven't had uh, a 7.1.4 or a 9.1.4 system. So I haven't had an Atmos system. This is the first time I've had just the 5.1. So those upward firing speakers really made a difference. Uh, like I said earlier, I watched Godzilla, the 2014 movie, and it sounded like the rain was coming from the ceiling. So it did a very accurate job of reproducing those sounds. So overall, I was really, really impressed. Now the two things some people may think of is last year's model, the Q90R, it has steel, where this one has fabric, personal opinion, whether you want it or not, totally up to you. 
And then the other thing is the display. Uh, last year's model had it on the front, this year has it on the top. I actually prefer it on the top because really once it's set up, I, I, I personally just, that's me, I don't wanna look at the display so it's better on the top and after a few minutes it shuts off anyway. So I, I, don't, I don't mind it and, and you can do some stuff with the remote. The only thing I would critique it on is I wish you could do a little bit more with the remote. You can't control individual speakers uh, from the remote control, you have to go to the unit uh, to do that. But other than that, I think it's a great soundbar. It sounds really, really good. It impressed me, and that's about it. That's about all I can say. I don't want to ramble, so you know what? Let's just cut it here, and let's say hopefully you'll join me on the next one. I hope you uh, would consider subscribing to my channel. Really appreciate that. Uh, I would love a thumbs up if you can do that for me. Other than that, I will, I will see you next time. Thanks so much. Take care.